Hello everybody, I am Nico D and today I am back with the Kados Vim 4 but I already reviewed this board so it isn't for the Kados Vim 4 itself but for this case. So this is a case that I've gotten yesterday so this comes from KKSB cases. This is a company from Sweden that makes metal cases for all kinds of single board computers and also custom cases for whatever you want. So they make very nice cases. They asked me, Nico, do you want to promote our cases? I said, well, send me one so I can test it. So they sent me one yesterday, but I had a problem with it. It wasn't working well out of the box. So it came with, with this, with this thermal pad. And it is really a thick thermal pad. And it wasn't performing well, so uh, it was overheating. It went to 90 degrees and then I stopped the tests because I didn't want to destroy my sock. But uh, so I had to look for a solution uh, because I couldn't promote uh, the case with this. So uh, I had two copper shims uh, lying around here that uh, together or the same size as this uh, thermal pad. I had some thermal paste lying around and I put some thermal paste on the copper shims and I put the copper shims instead of this and now it works great, it works perfect. So the idle temperature with this was 57 degrees Celsius. So idle temperature without doing anything, 57 degrees Celsius with this. Now the maximum temperature is only about 57 degrees. So it doesn't go over 60 degrees Celsius with this. So now I can promote this case. This case is really cool. This case is really good. It has got all the ports. So Kados sells a case, a plastic case uh, with their board. Is it like this? Yes. So Kados sells this plastic case. But it isn't very strong, it is already falling apart a little bit, there are uh, some pieces broken off. Uh, also, not all the ports are available, like for instance here you have got a micro HDMI in. This isn't available in this case, that is a pity. Here you can access the CSI, uh, the DSI, so for the camera and for display and there is even another port. The VB1, I don't know what the VB1 is. So with this case you can access all the ports. There are also buttons for the buttons over here. So that is awesome. You can hang it uh, as, as a visa mount on a display or something or on the wall or something like that. So for that it is really awesome. I like this case a lot. Just I don't like this. Thermal pads will never conduct better than copper, of course. So replacing this with copper makes it a lot better. So I will open it again today for you so you can see what I've done with the copper shims. I don't want to open it, but I have to, to show it. And then we are gonna take a look at their website to see what cases they sell. They sell it for a lot of single board computers. They also sell single board computers. But as many sellers of single board computers, there is a shortage. So they don't have a stock of all the single board computers. So let's open this. Here we go. So let's open it. So there are four screws over here. So now we can lift this up. Here it is. And now to get the board out, I can push here on the GPIO pins. So let's push. There it is. And here you see. So here you see there is thermal paste on here. And here are my two copper shims with thermal paste on each side. As you see, these are two copper shims with thermal paste. And like that, it works great. Oh, be careful with the buttons. 
I don't want to lose them. Oh, I'm making them dirty. So when you get it, you get these three, those you put in the sides over here. Then to put it together, so make sure there is thermal paste. I will add a little bit more. There is my thermal paste over here. So just a little bit more. That's more than enough. Just a tiny bit. Now the important thing is to have these antennas not overlap the sock of course or else it will not cool well. So that is a bit a pity that there isn't anything to put, the, to put these antennas correctly. So you have to play with it a bit and make sure when you close it, it doesn't go there. So the drip okay. that I added has been Okay, yeah, that's good. Now, just put this here and make sure the screws line up well, so they do line up. I hope you can see it. And four. So it is back together. Oh, I made it dirty. My beautiful new case. Okay, so it is back together. Let's do some tests. What I like a lot is that it is written on there what port it is. So here USB 3, here I can read it. Micro SD, USB C, USB 2. Here the buttons. Here VB1, DSI. CSI1, CSI2, LED, micro HDMI, so that is very cool. It isn't working well at all, so the idle temperature is 57 degrees Celsius, that is the idle temperature. And the maximum temperature, so let's do Nico D Blender benchmark. After 30 seconds we are already at 84 degrees Celsius, 90 and I'm gonna stop it here because I don't want it to die. So we are at 90 degrees and stop it. So that's not good at all. So here is the blender benchmark. Let's check the temperature, 44. So with this it runs to above 90 degrees after a few minutes and now it's only 45 degrees. So here it was already above 90 degrees with that thermal pad and with the copper shims it is almost half. So now 50 degrees and it is getting hotter and hotter but you can still touch it.
so the thermal conductivity is a lot better like this. This is just thermal resistance. This just ain't good. I don't like these things. Fifty one. Two minutes thirty remaining. We are three minutes in. Fifty one degrees. So we are almost at an end. Fifty three degrees. So one minute left. Fifty three. So as I said, it can go up to 57 degrees, it will not go over 60 degrees Celsius. And that is with continuous maximum CPU usage. So this is great. 53, 54 and if I touch it I will take out the heat and you will see 52 and it is done so now it will lower down to 44 degrees so 44 degrees as the idle temperature and as you've seen 54 was the maximum that I could get out of it but this test isn't long enough, of course, I should do it for 30 minutes, but as you see, it is a lot better than it used to be. So now let's take a look at their website. So here is the website, let's go to the home, okay. So if we click shop now, then we see this. Raspberry Pi, uh, heatsink with a fan, this is quite a nice heatsink. So let's shop by board Arduino no Raspberry Pi. So they've got a lot of cases for Raspberry Pi. This is what we've just seen. They've got displays. Very nice displays. A lot of cases. A lot of nice cases. So there are 15 pages with Raspberry Pi. So uh, that's a lot. Let's see Nvidia for the Jetson Nano. Here case for the Jetson Nano, here camera holder, here they sell it, it is sold out. So again they have got a lot, so five pages, I'm not gonna show it all. So for Asus, so for the Tinkerboard and the Tinker Edge. Tinkerboard 2, Tinkerboard Edge, and again a lot of peripherals. So, Banana Pi, M3, here the Banana Pi M4, they have got the Banana Pi M3 to sell, but the M4 is sold out. The M64, so let's go to Karas. So they have only got two cases. So this is the one that I'm using now for the Karas Fim 4. So it costs 36 euro. You can have 10% off if you use my link. And this is the case for the Karas Vim 3. Also looking pretty nice. So they have got a lot of cases here for Oldroid, for example. So Oldroid M1, HC4, metal case, N2+, Plus metal case. So they have got really a lot of nice cases. And they sell a lot of things. And here if we go to custom case design. So we produce custom cases and enclosures designed based on your IDs. So you can give them some ideas, they will design it and they will make it. So uh, this is pretty cool, let's click here. You send us your custom 
case ID and requirements. We make a draft of your ID in CAD and send you a rough design proposal, price estimation. So as you see, you can let them make cases for you. Like for instance, I am making now a NAS and uh, this would be great for a NAS. So I will have a board, I don't know the name of it, but uh, it will have PCIe. So uh, I could make a case for it and uh, have four times uh, PCI, uh, four times SATA in the PCIe and then have four hard disks in the same case and also put a normal uh, PC PSU in it to power it with 12 volts for all the hard drives. So as you see they sell a lot of cases for a lot of boards and also a lot of peripherals. So I like this case a lot. It is great to be able to passively cool it. I don't like the fan that's on top of it. So here is the Kados H2. This has got about the same heatsink and fan that the Kados Fim 4 had. And when this fan turns on, it really makes a whistle sound and it isn't very pleasant. I don't like this fan a lot. So uh, I had replaced that fan with a normal 5 volt fan and that was less noisy but I like this a lot better because this doesn't overheat this doesn't need a fan this is well protected I don't have to look out to not uh, short anything so I like this case a lot just be sure if you buy a case like this be sure to replace this because this doesn't perform well I can't say their cases are bad just because of one thing that isn't very good. So you can support me by buying things at KKSB cases. So the affiliate link here in the description. So I get 10% on every buy you buy. And I also have got a promotion code for 10% off. So the promotion code is Nico de Carf, all on each other. So here in the description you can read it all, everything you need. So if you want a case like this, buy it with my affiliate link please, then you help my channel. So thank you all for watching, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I will review a lot of RK3588 boards in the coming weeks. So subscribe for that, see you all later, bye!